I can't remember when I first realised I was gay. There was no big revelation. Nobody changed my life. No one forced anything on me or forced me to do anything I didn't want to. It crept up on me, really. The unsensational truth nibbling away at my ear as I grew up. What was true is how natural it felt. It had always felt right. I was entirely happy to be who I was. Only others seemed to want to direct me another way. I've known guys who have come out later in life, creating turmoil within a previously, on the surface, happy family life, a home broken, along with a wife's heart and kids' expectations. I've known young guys who never came to terms with being gay, fought it, hated it, wished it were not so, craved for a normal life. Wrecked by grief and dismay at their situation, before they'd had time to find anyone to love them for who they are. On the other hand, I've known guys who seem to go out of their way to outrage, to shock, to prove to everyone they walk past that they are different, who enjoy being stared at, just so they can pout back and blow a kiss. I was never any of those. I was just me. Even at school, where I was tagged Queen Hillary by many of the boys, their name-calling never intimidated me. In fact, I would often use it to my benefit, as I did one cold and rainy morning. I usually walked to school, but on this day, as the weather was awful, I boarded the old double-decker routemaster for the ten-minute ride. I would normally sit on the lower deck with the girls, much more fun, and not as rowdy as upstairs, where all the lads were as usual, making a racket and running all over the place. But that day, the lower deck was packed, so I had to join the boys. As I climbed the stairs, I heard one of them say, Hillary's here! And when I reached the top, much to my thrill, they all stood to attention. A boy at the front of the bus stood in the aisle and shouted, Hail Queen Hillary! which everyone repeated. It was rather a marvellous noise. I smiled at them all, waved grandly, and made my way to the front, flopping down in the seat vacated by the ringleader. Thank you, I said to him, beaming gratefully, and to the rest of the bus, you can sit down now. They did, leaving this one lad without a seat, and looking most disconsolate that his prank had backfired.